Right now, I am preparing the potting mixes for the two perennials that I grow that require sand only. One of them is called wild lupine, lupinus perennials, sometimes referred to as blue lupine, sometimes sundial lupine. And it's usually like a blue violet. The ones that I've grown are blue violet and white or, or like a violet purple and, and white. Uh, not as much blue as I'd like to. Uh, I've had a variety in a couple of the plantings that I've made that made it suitable because I use multiple seed sources that I could probably select over time to get more blue ones. Kind of like uh, I did with the spring beauties and the nodding wild onions that I grow. I put a variety of of seed sources or, or cutting sources in a, a, a bed and gradually over time I thinned out a specific shade uh, so I was left with darker ones or lighter ones depending on what the goal was. You can do this with many types of, of perennials that, ha that have a range of color shades or tones. But that's sundial lupine. And the other one that I'm going to grow that I don't have a picture of right here is clustered poppy mallow, which here in Kanki County is one of the largest populations uh, in, in the Midwest, maybe, because uh, they prefer sandy soil. And there's, in eastern Kanki County, there's a lot of sandy areas. Sandy savannah is what it grows. But both of them are perennials. Uh, the other sand-only plants that grow yeah, are the uh, large bracket corydalysis and the purple, I'm oh, sorry, the violet calencia. But those are both annuals. So I usually seed those outside. But anyhow, here, because they, they need sandy soil, because they they uh, get root rot very easily. Now, there are other plants that I grow that prefer sandy soil, but they that you when you find them in the wild, they'll be in sandy soil frequently. Not because that's really what they prefer, but that's an environment that they can compete well in. Meaning, if there's more fertility, taller plants or more aggressive plants will shade them out. So they end up in sandy soil because that's where they can, they can survive and other ones can't as well. That would be like cleft phlox and lance leaf coreopsis and pasque flower. But anyhow, with these two here, uh, I'm going to be stratifying the seeds in a little bit here. But first, I'm going to get the soil... In the pots that I'm well, not soiled, the potting mix that I'm going to use. Now, I've done a little bit with cluster poppy mallow, but many, many times with sundial lupine, experimented with the right potting mixes, combinations of, of perlite, vermiculite, coconut core, peat moss, rocks, uh, wood chips, all kinds of different combinations I've used. And what seems to work best, and it de depends on how often I keep up on the watering or get to the watering or forgetting the watering, whatever the case may be. So half of these, I'm going to use straight perlite. Just coarse perlite uh, in, in, in regular pots, you know, the blue for the blue lupine. And I'll put these thinner pots, because I'm running low on this size right now, in there with this root prune one. See, these are good to grow things with that have coarse tap roots. But the problem is, you know, they fall over easily. And if it's smaller soil, smaller graded soil, it's going to come out over time. 
and then frequently you might end up with some dry roots if you don't keep up on it and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, blue pots for the sundial lupine, black pots for the cluster poppy mallow. Half of these I'm going to have just straight perlite. The other half I'm taking a little bit of my fast drainage soil mix I made. Just a little bit of that with sand because that's where you know coarse sand that's what normally grows in and perlite in this uh broken up pine bark now i don't can't use just sand because without any organic material in it and constantly being watered it's going to compact the sand so then the drainage won't be good and I can't, and straight perlite, I'm going to be trying. That will work as long as I keep watering it. Because the perlite makes there a lot of air. But there's also not going to be very much nutrients in it. So it's it's going to be... It's going to be a toss-up, depending on how often I water them or how, how, how much time I let... Because... A lot of dry plants that you grow in pots, dry soil plants that you grow in pots, you have to make sure they dry out in between waterings so bacteria doesn't, doesn't develop. But how much is hard to tell because you can't tell that it is past needing water until the leaves wilt. And you can't tell if it's getting too much water until it rots or the leaves turn yellow. So... Half of these I'm going to put straight perlite. Half of these I'm putting a little bit of this dry soil mix with more perlite, wood chips, and sand in the other half. Now, so I'll put, I got to boil them, the cluster poppy mallow seeds. I'll put those in these, these four here. So two will be. I don't know if I have one or two seed sources of cluster poppy mallow right now, but I'll put some in the perlite and some in this super dry soil, super drainage soil mix. And then because I know I have two lupine sources, I'll have this line for one and this for the other. I'm keeping them separate because I'm, you know, I'll put a, a toothpick or a, or, or, a piece of paper, something to mark which one's which. But I also want to make sure I have both styles of soil. Because if I water them just the right amount, these are going to grow best. If I water them too much, these are or, or let them dry out too much, these are going to do better than these. So... When you spend all the effort to grow something that's touchy like this, you don't want to put, you know, like put all your eggs in one pot. Because, of course, even though I'm going to stratify these seeds and get them set up in this uh, half flat, I'm also going to stratify seeds and put them in sand in a bag in the refrigerator in case I screw up on these. And, of course... Even with that, I'm not going to be sowing all the seeds. I'll probably sow half or, or, or a fourth of the seeds. But, oh, also I need to mention, even though it's going to work if the, the water and, and timing is right with just perlite, I still need to put some bone meal on it. Because this is uh, non-nitrogen high phosphorus. Uh, bone meal because it being uh, lupine in, in the pea family it can fix its nitrogen you know but it's still going to need a little bit of root help because this this holds nutrients but it doesn't make nutrients and I, I swear by high uh, phosphorus bone meal so that's what I'm doing and uh, 
this is, like I said, this is different than most of the other plants I grow. In fact, most of the plants I grow, I try to use heavier soil than the mainstream horticultural world does because most of the soil that I plant plants in are on the clay side. But the exception, of course, is clustered poppy mallow, sundial lupine, and sassafras. And to a lesser degree, smoke tree when I grow that, but it's not so much sand, but, but dry line findings that I put into that one. So that's what I'm doing this morning.